In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a VRA event subscription. Let's get started. Hi everyone, I'm Brian Watchers from Bavork. If this is your first time here and you want to learn about automating, programming, and monitoring in VMware environments, you're in the right place. Start now by subscribing and click the bell so that you don't miss a thing. Welcome back. In this video, we're going to put together all the pieces that we've been talking about, and we're going to create a subscription. Before you can create a subscription, you need to pair VRA and VRO together. You need to pick an event topic. So what are we looking for to, in, in the VRA environment to trigger the orchestrator workflow to be called? You need an orchestrator workflow to call. And then, of course, you need to create this event subscription itself. So what we're going to do here in a few moments is take a look in the lab environment at how to create the event subscription itself. So let's go ahead to the lab environment. This time in the lab environment, we're going to see how to create a VRA event subscription. So taking a look here, as you can see, I'm still in the VRI's orchestrator client. Uh, in the last video, we were showing you the workflow that we're going to call. So uh, it's time to leave the orchestrator client and go back to Cloud Assembly. Because Cloud Assembly is where you actually create the VRA event subscription. To create the VRA event subscription, you'll go to Extensibility and click on Subscriptions. As you can see here, I have already defined four different subscriptions that respond to different events that are going on in my VRA environment. If you want to understand what each of these subscriptions are, if you look at the combination of the name of each of these subscriptions and or the dotted notation, you should be able to figure out what each of these subscriptions is about, except for maybe that one way over on the right side. We'll talk about day two action requested a little later on. But the first three ought to make sense. So uh, if you'd like to pop quiz yourself, go ahead and hit the pause button and take a look at the first three subscriptions here and see if you can figure out what they're doing. Okay, now that you're back from that spontaneous pop quiz, one of the things that may have made it perhaps a little challenging, if anything, to figure out what the first three subscriptions are doing is the fact that they are showing up in the order that they're showing up. Um, if you were to rearrange these slightly, pre-provision subscription is the first one of these subscriptions that's going to trigger when we start deploying the machine. Then post-provision subscription is going to be triggered after the machine's done being built. And then when we're done with the machine and we destroy it, when we delete it, then post-removal subscription will trigger. So uh, the, the the order that these are listed here, well, they're not alphabetical. I, I, I guess they're in the order that I define them. I don't really recall, but um, do, if, if need be, mentally rearrange these in your brain into the order that they, they trigger chronologically. So as you can see, we've got these four different event topics, and each one says what um, events we're looking for and what orchestrator workflow to call when that event occurs. Now, I've already defined these, so what I'm about to do here is not necessary. Um, I'm going to pretend that I'm defining pre-provision subscription, also known as compute.provision. I'm going to pretend like that doesn't exist and that we're creating it brand new. So to create the pre-provision subscription, I'm going to go to the new subscription button, click it, we interrupt this video for a brief message. I create videos like this one to teach you about VMware products and technologies such as VRA, VROPS, and VRO. I love creating these videos and sharing with you and people all, all around the world information about these VMware products, but there's tons more information than I can share just in these videos alone. So see the YouTube description down below where you can find a link where you can find more information about how to join me in the classroom. We return you to our previously scheduled programming. And as you can see, I'm taken to a screen where I'm going to define my new subscription. And again, I know I've already got a subscription defined called this exactly, 
but I'm going to pretend I'm creating it again from scratch. So pre provision subscription is the name of my subscription. The next thing that I type is the description of this subscription. So I might in this case say something like this um, event or this subscription gets triggered before VRA starts building a machine. So type a good description because that'll help you six months later or your coworkers right now to understand what the subscription is doing. In the next section, we define the event topic. Again, we saw in the previous video 29 different event topics that we can select from. So our job here is to simply pick which one. So I'll click on add. And here's the list of the 29 different sub event topics that we saw before. And all I need to do is find the right one. Compute provision is the friendly name for uh, what I think of as compute.provision.pre. So this is the, sub the event topic that I want the subscription to look for. So I simply select it. Uh, notice, by the way, I can only select one event topic. If you want to have a subscription responding to multiple event topics, you can't do that. If you want to have multiple event topics responded to, you have to create a separate subscription for each one of those event topics. All right, so I'm selecting my event topic. Now, the next thing that I'm offered is the option of setting up the specific conditions that have to occur for this, this subscription to trigger the call of the orchestrated workflow. By default, this condition slider is turned off, which means anytime the compute.provision.pre event triggers, then this subscription will trigger. But if I slide the slider for condition to on, I can write JavaScript code, such as the examples you see down here below, that specify only under these conditions do I want the orchestrator workflow called. So if we say things like event.username equals someone, then this subscription would only trigger if a certain person you specify is the one that's actually deploying from the blueprint. On the other hand, if we say event.data.blueprintID equals some, every blueprint has its own ID. Um, if we specify the blueprint ID in the condition, then that means that this subscription will only trigger if the blueprint that's being used is a specific blueprint. So it's not, when you start setting up conditions, it's not enough just for the event to be triggering for orchestrator, the orchestrator workflow to get called. It has to be both the event triggering and the, the conditions have to be met. But for our purposes here, we're going to leave condition slider turned off. This section here is titled runnable item. Uh, you might think of the next thing that we'd ask you would be the orchestrator workflow, but notice this doesn't say orchestrator workflow. Instead, it says runnable item. And the reason why it says that will become apparent when I click the add button. So what is a runnable item? Well, a runnable item could either be an orchestrator workflow, or there's another thing that we can call when events trigger, something called an ABX action. We can talk about ABX actions in some other video, but for right now, in this video series, I specifically am focusing on how to call an orchestrator workflow. So let's choose orchestrator. And now I have a list of hundreds and hundreds of workflows, but again, I'm going to filter down by searching for a portion of the name of the workflow that I'm looking for. So I search using the filter VRA. It finds one and only one workflow. That workflow is the workflow that I shall showed you in the previous video. So all I have to do is select it and then click the select button. So now the subscription knows what orchestrator workflow to call. There's only a couple other pieces of uh, info that we have to supply here. One is we specify whether or not we want the call to the orchestrator workflow that we just picked to be blocking or non-blocking. Again, we talked in the previous video about blocking versus non-blocking. Quick reminder, if we say that this workflow call is blocking, then this workflow is going to have to complete before VRA is going to go on to the next subscription for this deployment. On the other hand, if we say non-blocking, which is what we have specified here with the switch turned off, that means that 
the orchestrator workflow we just specified is going to get called, but VRA is not going to wait for the completion of that workflow. It's just, VRA is just going to go on to the next event subscription. And then the last part down here allows us to say whether we want the subscription to apply to everybody or just people within a particular project. Now, in the lab environment I'm working in, it doesn't matter what I slide the slider position to because I only have one project. But if you had multiple projects, you could slide this slider to the other position and then pick the one or more projects that you want this event subscription limited to. But again, I'm going to go ahead and just say any project. And when I click the create button, I'll create a new event subscription. But I'm not going to actually create the, the button here. I'm not going to create the create button because as you already know, I've already defined this event subscription. I'm going to hit cancel because I already defined that event subscription. We already saw that it was defined here. In fact, I've got four event subscriptions, which we will be seeing triggering in the next few videos. Join me in the next video where we'll deploy a machine and watch our event subscription in action.